my name is Ayush Agarwal, uh, and I'm an artist and uh, I'm a teacher. I also found the new school, new atelier in India, which is called the Samsara Academy of Art. And uh, I currently reside in my hometown, Hyderabad, which is a city in the south of India. How did you discover your passion for art? And how was the, that transition? Uh, you discovered it, mm -hmm. and then when you decided that you wanted to study it and become an artist? I mean, I guess I've been always uh, interested in drawing and painting since I was young because during my school as well, when we had projects, I would spend more time doing the drawings and making crafts for those projects rather than actually writing uh, the projects. Uh, so I guess like now when I look back to my younger self, I can realize, okay, maybe I always had a thing for it. I think uh, the main point uh, where I decided that I want to go into the arts was after my 12th. Uh, because during that time I was actually studying to be a chartered accountant. Uh, so I was studying for a CPT exam, which, which is one of the entrance tests to uh, become, like, to start pursuing your chartered accounting studies in India. So I was studying for that, and then I realized, like, at the end of my 12th that, is this really what I want to do? Uh, and I was really interested in, uh, making, uh, studying about games and animation. I was fascinated by the processes of how people made games, animation movies, and when I started doing research on it, I was so overblown by the amount of uh, process, the thinking and imaginative uh, capacities that artists have to go through and the amount of studies that they have to go through to create these beautiful movies and beautiful games. And I guess that's when I decided that I wanted to be an artist for uh, games and movies first. Regarding your, your training, how was it in India? What were your choices in order to develop your, your training? Yeah. I come from a very conservative family, so I was not allowed to go outside, in fact, the city that I lived in. So I had to find educational means that were confined to the city I was living in. So uh, in the beginning, I just joined an animation and gaming school here in Hyderabad. It was a private uh, school. Um, they uh, had, it was called Picasso Animation College, and they said they were in affiliation with uh, like a Canadian uh, college. Um, and they had instructors from there who came in as well. Uh, and I was also at the same time studying in the evenings at a different school for gaming as well. So I was studying at two schools at the same time. But the problem what I faced was um, even though we had some instructors for the beginning few months, for the first two, three months, we had some amazing instructors and amazing teachers who were there. Uh, but because here education is treated more like a business rather than trying to provide the best possible uh, curriculum and teaching facilities for the students. They had a problem with the administration and the teachers had a problem and most of my teachers quit uh, and that's when I realized like we had no teachers who could actually teach us the concepts that I was looking for and so I that's when I took to online courses and I taught myself the online courses a lot of uh, about like modeling or animation and things like that uh, and I found a job in the industry by teaching myself online but I actually traveled all the way like I went to various schools across India not even just uh, the city like I convinced my parents and I was like I want to see if there are other schools and I went to various schools across India to see if there were places that would actually have and um, coming from that uh, conservative family and then convincing them, I guess, convincing them to travel just around India was very hard. How, yeah. how was it oh, to, yeah. how did you convince them uh, for, for your education in Europe? Because you came to Europe, right? And first, I, guess, I had to convince them that I wanted to be an artist. That was the first major step. Uh, because like I said, I was starting to be a chartered accountant. And then after that, my parents always wanted me to do business administration, like a master's in business administration and things like that. So when I first 
I made like a whole PowerPoint presentation about like uh, what are the different art fields that are there. What is the base salary that you can get if you get a job in the industry, et cetera, et cetera. And I had to make a whole presentation and explain to them, okay, these are the possibilities. Even if I'm not like someone like who's doing amazing, even if I have a position that's like a artist in a geek company or something, this is the salary that I can make. And then finally they saw that, okay, I'm actually doing all the research and everything. So they allowed me to pursue what I wanted to. Uh, well, my mom has been very supportive. I think my mom is always like, I mean, it's like, do what you want. As long as you're happy, that's what matters to me. So do whatever you want. So my mom has been very supportive. It took a tiny bit of convincing with my dad, but um, I think he finally came around now after <laughs> six, seven years when he sees me doing okay. When it came to traveling the world, it was the same thing. I, I had to convince him, listen, I'm not able to get the education that I want here in India because I saw these amazing artworks and amazing drawing and painting that was coming outside of India, like from Europe and from US and in games and animation specifically. Because I was also working in a studio at that time. Uh, I was working for a year almost. Um, and I realized like I had reached a certain point in terms of where I was in terms of artistically. Um, because I was working more as a game designer and a UI artist. So I had two roles. It was a small studio, so we had to do as much as we can. So I had to like balance the characters in the game and do a lot of like uh, designing maps for the game, uh, designing icons, uh, the interface and everything for the game. And I realized that I had reached a certain point where I could get stuck in that particular job. And that's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to learn more. Uh, and I wanted to develop my artistic skills and vision. So I was like, listen, I also worked in the industry for one year. Please, please, please. I want to learn more and learn the fundamentals and everything. And that's when I found out about the ateliers. So without even telling them, I actually applied to all the ateliers in the world. Every place, like, Every place I could find on, find on like Art Renewal's website, I applied to every atelier. And I think at that time there were only 14 or 17 ateliers when I was applying. Uh, and a lot of the ateliers was not, were not taking international students because uh, they cannot give visas and things like that. So it was yeah and then the two places that accepted me was one of the uh, academy of realist art in toronto and uh, the florence academy of art in sweden so once i got the acceptance letters then i showed them that listen i got the acceptance letters as well from the schools please 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 i want to go and then they were like okay fine uh, you've done all the work anyway yourself so you can go and study and then they were very supportive uh, that helping me get a loan for my education and then supporting me whenever they can. So it was, yeah. I Beautiful. don't think I could have done like what I have till date without their support. I think that you are one of those examples that said if you want something, you go for it. And if you're sure you want to do it, you will find a way <laughs> yeah. to do it. So the figurative decision figurative training was because you felt that you were stuck also mm -hmm. in, in your in your skills the concept artist i primarily wanted to be a visual development artist for movies and games which is where uh, we're working more on uh, designing the characters environments and the overall look and feel of the game so you have to work a lot from imagination and study nature diligently and uh, I heard about ateliers from a lot of the veterans in the industry at that time. Uh, and they were like, it's important to study from nature and the fundamentals of drawing and painting. Uh, so that's when I decided that I'm going to apply for the ateliers. And I found um, the Florence Academy of Art and the other ateliers in the world. That is primarily what led to my decision. 
and a lot of the schools and universities that actually teach entertainment design or animation and games were much more expensive compared to the atelier system. So it was both like the financial situation as well as like uh, the kind of uh, fundamentals that were being taught in the ateliers that led to my decision that I was going to join an atelier and not a university. I studied for a year in the Florence Academy where I learned the fundamentals about drawing from life and uh, improving my observational skills, I think, which was very important. Um, and then I had to take one gap year because I ran out of money. So I came back to India. I worked for another year, saved up some more money, took another educational loan. And then I went to uh, US uh, Los Angeles uh, where the entertainment industry is. So I was studying at uh, Los Angeles Academy of Art. During that time, I still wasn't sure. Like I loved drawing and painting. And I think studying at the Florence Academy of Art gave me a taste of uh, working with the traditional media because prior to that, all I did was working in digital. But because I got that experience from the Florence Academy of Art, I think when I went to LA as well, I was still in love with uh, the traditional media and the process of creating from life. You could ask me that, what led me to moving from designing for games and animation to figurative art or working in traditional media? I think there's one key moment where I met like one of these uh, idols for me at that time. Uh, he's a concept artist in the industry. He's worked on amazing movies like Star Wars, uh, uh, Ian McKaig. So I met him at a convention in Los Angeles and um, we had a conversation with him and he asked us like, uh, what are you doing? And we said, they're studying at uh, uh, Los Angeles Academy of Figurative Art. Uh, and he was like, that's great. And what do you want to do after you finish your studies? So uh, we just said like, we want to get a job in the industry. And he just laughed at us and he was like, you're studying at a Jedi school to get a job in the industry. What is wrong with you? Uh, if that's your goal, then you're not studying for the right reasons. You have to study because you want to create something. You want to uh, like make something that you want, right? And you're studying at such an amazing school. So think about that. Uh, and yes if it leads to a job in the industry that your passion for creating stuff it if the consequences that it leads to a job in the industry then that's fine but if it doesn't lead to a job in the industry as well you have to know that with your skills and the things that you're learning you should be able to create what you want and i think that specific moment with him kind of changed my entire perception about what i wanted to do and give me a hard uh, like reality check. Okay, is this what I want to do? Do I really want to work in games and movies? Or do I want to just work in traditional media and create fine art? And I had another amazing instructor, like he was a sculpture instructor, David Simon, who taught us to ask why. Why are you doing this? And during my second or third trimester, he had this amazing uh, conference where he had all the students sit with him and he just asked us why are you studying at this particular school and then if we gave him that then he would ask again why and it made us think very critically of what and why we wanted to learn these things and so that's something as well that led to me changing from working in the games and animation I guess to working in fine art. How did you end up in, at the Barcelona Academy of Art? I knew um, Dorian, Dorian Itten and some other instructors from the Barcelona Academy of Art. I've seen like Jordi's work and I uh, saw Joe's work at that time and because I knew them from Florence and I knew Dorian, I did, uh, I spoke to Dorian on a Skype call and said like I want to transfer from here to the Barcelona Academy of Art, will there be a consideration given in terms of the credits? Uh, can they be transferred and things like that? 
and Dorian spoke to the administration and yeah, they said it was possible. Uh, and so at that time, they also told me that I could start painting with the drawing skills I had. Uh, so I decided, okay, I would save a lot of money in terms of the expenses. Um, and also like, like Georgie's work is amazing. So I was so inspired by it. Uh, and I wanted to learn from him and the other instructors that were teaching Joe, Dorian, uh, Gerard. And so I decided, okay, I might as well uh, go to Barcelona. I also liked more the European lifestyle than the US lifestyle, I guess. I want to, uh, to learn a little <clears throat> bit more about your inspiration. And then I'd like to talk about your school and, mm -hmm. and what uh, your motivation on opening your school and what your school is doing now at the moment for the, for the community. In terms of my work, what inspires me is nature and the people around me. I think like uh, we're surrounded by so many amazing people and their stories that it's, uh, I can spend a lot of time like getting inspired by looking at nature, just simple objects or just talking to people and hearing what they have to say about these things, right? Uh, and I can also, if I find someone interesting, I can just spend a lot of time just observing, looking at them and uh, it, it's just like a process that's very hard to put into works. There's like a hidden story always, right, with people uh, around you. The main inspiration for me to start the school, as you've seen my journey of what I went through, like studying, like teaching myself online and not finding the mentors, etc. in India. Um, even though there are some good schools, I'm not saying that there are not good schools anymore. There are some good schools but there are still a lot of problems these schools that face. Uh, but because I faced all of these problems, when I decided to move back to India, I thought like, why not start a place myself where hopefully I can provide the things that I was not able to get when I was trying to learn. And uh, I think that's the major inspiration for me to start this place is to provide this education that I was not able to find when I was studying. I know the school is very new yeah. and unfortunately you have to face the lockdown, but I'm curious about the reaction of the community and people in India knowing that there is this new place that is providing this type of education. We get a lot of inquiries from students who want to come and study with us. But the problem is that because we're fairly new, there's a lack of trust, right? That's the first thing. The second thing is we don't provide a degree like uh, other uh, schools in India or other colleges in India. It's a certificate course that's approved by Art Renewal Center uh, in a way. So there's no degree. And in India, there is still this uh, whole uh, mentality that you need a degree to be a professional artist or to be a professional in any field. It's like, it's, a, it's that piece of paper that matters probably a lot more than the skills and the education that is being provided. Uh, and because we've grown up with that mentality that, okay, no, 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 you have to get a degree. That's how the society functions. That's how you're gonna get a job. Um, that's how what everyone is asking for uh, so there is still that mindset that is prevalent especially with the parents as well because compared to european system where uh, everyone or the american system where uh, once you're 18 you have freedom to take your own decisions and do these things yes we do have the freedom to take our own decisions but we still live with our family uh, as a unit and we have to like uh, ask them their permission with everything that we do. So I think a lot of the times we face this problem as well because uh, we're fairly new and we don't provide a degree. Uh, the students who want to come and study with us cannot uh, because either their parents are uh, saying no, no, it's they don't provide a degree. So because it's not affiliated with the government, you cannot go study there. That's the first major thing. Apart from that as well, there have been some students who know like the importance of the skills that we're providing. And they're just like, they convince their parents just as 
I did, and they uh, left their uh, hometowns and everything, and they traveled all the way from various states in India to come and study with us. So there has been good response as well, but there are other challenges that we face from the community. It's a very small community, and it's not accepted by the society as of yet uh, to have models. Um, so we kind of found a way that we won't have nude models. We would have models that are uh, clothed like. So that's how we're trying to develop the culture slowly and hopefully educate the people around us that we're just studying the human figure. It is important to learn these fundamentals, to learn to observe things. And it's one of the most challenging things to do. And there is nothing wrong with this idea of studying the human figure. Uh, because it's still like there are a lot of topics which are considered taboo in India because of the culture aspects and cultural norms in the society so I think that's the second challenge that we face and when I guess they see our website where we have photographs of uh, models you know, studies and things like that it becomes another challenge uh, or even when some parents visit the studio they see these uh, paintings of like figures and things like that and they, they just look at me like what are you doing uh, and they don't want their kids to come and study there. So I think that's another aspect that kind of uh, doesn't allow us to provide what we want to in a way. I think um, you, you are a big inspiration. You're going for what you want and you're finding the way mm -hmm. from convincing your parents and doing the presentation and then going around the world and now doing your school. Um, it's beautiful and it's inspiring, inspiring. Uh, the last okay. thing I, I'd yeah. like to hear about, of course, it's now you're actually uh, not only doing all these things, but you're also helping the community. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about what you're doing and what the school is doing for the mm -hmm. community at the moment? It's a very small contribution as much as I can from my side because I still have a lot of other things. So what I'm doing is I've uh, put up my work to a sale uh, and whatever I sell, I would be donating part of the contributions to, uh, like I said, there's problems where people are not getting food, uh, the migrant laborers are poor people here who are not getting food. So uh, there's an amazing organization here uh, called Safa Society. Uh, what they did was they organized groups with the post office, the police and things like that. And uh, they uh, made these camps and they started donating food packages uh, to uh, all the slum areas and the poor people who are having a hard time finding food. So I've been donating money uh, to that organization so that they can continue to do the wonderful initiative that they're trying to do. And the second thing is through the school, I'm also trying to raise funds to provide scholarships to the students uh, because I know like with the coronavirus, there's going to be a huge impact in terms of uh, them being able to afford the tuition and helping us run the premises. Uh, because even before the COVID impact, I think like uh, for the fee structure that we have placed in the academy, it's still quite high for a lot of the uh, students who want to come and study with us. So I tried to help them with scholarships. In this lockdown has given me more time to focus my energy to creating videos and online classes. So I made up like a YouTube channel for the... Um, to provide the information things like that well thank you for for showing so us much. for showing us that once you are committed to something and you know you want something you will do the impossible to to go for it so thank you very much yeah. no no thank you so much for having me it's been a pleasure and i, I want to thank like the tiac group as well because of the support that you've been providing me even though we're so far apart like different countries and I think the same things some things that I learned from you guys as well that I'm trying to implement here because of your generosity I'm able to pay it forward 
to other people and i think that's one of the most important things that we want to uh provide right as artists and as human beings it's just if you because of the generosity that barcelona and the teachers and my mentors that provided me and tia group and other people i'm able to do this myself and i think that's the least we can do